today's project, we're going to be learning about the Chinese symbol of the yin and yang. And in Chinese philosophy, yin and yang is a concept of how seemingly opposite or contrary forces uh, might actually be complementary to one another and uh, lift each other up. So kind of like the concept of opposites attract, we're going to use opposing um, elements. We're going to use line and color. So one side will be a Zentangle line design and the other side will just be a color scheme. So you have the opportunity to choose warm colors like I did here, or you could use all cool colors in your painted side. So the symbol of the yin and yang uh, can also mean a, like a starting point for change. Uh, it's two halves coming together to complete a wholeness. Both halves appear to kind of chase around one another, uh, trying to seek one another out to form a new balance. So balance is going to be one of the uh, principles that we're going to be focusing on within this project. And we're incorporating the element of line with our Zentangled line design and the element of color, analogous colors, three colors that are close to one another on the color wheel. So I chose a warm color scheme. Uh, you could choose a cool color scheme. It's up to you. You could do warm colors like I did um, with the painted half. So for today or for this project, you're going to need a piece of paper. You're going to need some round tracing templates, okay, on different sizes. You're going to need a Sharpie marker. I recommend having also either a fine tip Sharpie or a micron pen that has a smaller point than this Sharpie. You will also eventually need uh, watercolor paints and you definitely need an eraser because you wanna lighten up your lines so that you don't see any of the, the lines that we're gonna to use to set it all up. We're gonna to have to erase some lines so that they don't show up underneath the watercolor. Okay, let's get started. For the first template, I basically took a paper plate and I cut the, the rim, um, the scalloped rim off. I wanted it to be small enough to fit in the middle of my paper. So I didn't want to make it too small, but it's approximately, I would say about six inches. If you take a ruler, it's about six inches wide. Okay. And then I'm going to place it in the center of my paper. And I'm really going to eyeball the center of my paper. Okay. Just place it and trace it. Trace it with a pencil. Make sure the pencil touches the edge of the tracing template. Take your time. Hold the template down so it doesn't move. If it moves, just erase it, part, whatever part you don't like, and then you could retrace. Okay, so there's your first circle that you're going to start with. The next step is with a very light line and a ruler, you can measure the center. Okay, so it's approximately doesn't have to be exact. I make a little dot in the halfway is three inches because it's six inches wide. And I'm gonna take that ruler and now I'm going to just make a very, very light line down the center of my circle. So it's basically a line down the middle. Next, I would cut a circle that's up almost three inches or about three inches. Okay, so this next template's about three inches. Or you can find something at home to trace. And I make a, a register mark in the middle of that circle at the top and the bottom. And I'm gonna put that and line it up with the center line on my paper. I put it at the top of my circle. And this is just a little trick that I was trying to figure out how I could make it really easy for you to draw this. You certainly could draw your yin and yang symbol freehand too. Just sketch lightly in case you need to fix anything. So you're gonna trace around half of the circle like so. 
So your paper will look like that. Then I'm just gonna slide this down to the bottom, not here. I, I slide the circle down to the bottom. It doesn't quite meet up, that's okay. And I'm gonna start from the bottom and trace up around half of my circle. And then I just kind of want to get these two semicircle shapes to kind of meet in the center, okay? It's not an exact science, but you just need a bent teardrop shape that looks almost exactly the same size as another bent teardrop shape. So your picture is divided into two of the same similar shape and it's flipped, okay? And this is where your eraser comes in because now you just want to erase your lines. And I even lighten this line up, okay? As long as I can see it, I'm gonna be tracing this with a um, Sharpie in a little bit. I wanna get rid of all the eraser shavings and you can get rid of the center line now. That little dot, you don't need it anymore. The next thing I would do is take another, you could take a quarter um, or you can make a, a, a circle about an inch wide. And this is just on regular drawing paper. And I'm going to put it in the middle. You can kind of see where my old line was. I'm going to put it in the middle of this teardrop over here. Trace it. And then I'm going to put another one and line them up. And if you want to, you could have left that line, make a register mark in the center, just like so. Line it up with the old line and trace your circle like so. And there you go. So now you have two small circles and you have your yin and your yang. The next step is to take your Sharpie and just slowly and carefully trace over your pencil line. Once you've completed tracing the pencil lines with a Sharpie, you can erase any leftover pencil. Sometimes you might want to wait for the Sharpie to dry a little bit. If you do it right away, I mean, just a few minutes, like a 30, 30 seconds to a minute. If, if you do it right away, sometimes the Sharpie can smudge and smear. So you just want to get rid of all of your old pencil lines. Now you want to remove any um, eraser shavings because you don't want those to get into the point of your marker. The first thing we're going to do is create a line design. You're going to use a variety of different types of lines. You can use curved lines, zigzag lines. You can create patterns like checkerboards or chevrons. Uh, you can use repeated repetitive circles inside of circles, concentric circles. You can use wavy lines, okay, that create almost the optical illusion of depth, depending on how thick and thin uh, you create your lines. And also when you overlap the patterns, it makes like this pattern almost look as if it appears that it's underneath the zigzag pattern over here. So um, you wanna kind of break up the space originally with some larger lines, curving lines, and even some shapes, and then put line designs inside those other shapes. So let's get started. So one thing you can do is you can just find a spot anywhere on your design, and you can actually either follow a similar shape, but you can take one wavy line and kind of break up the space now into two two shapes. So we're only working on one of the shapes that we've created. One you're going to leave because that one you're going to paint in. 
you will also create a zentangle in the opposite circle. I call it like the eye. And now I'm going to break up this space a little bit more with some more curving lines. So now I have one, two, three, four shapes, lines that connect, create shapes. And within those shapes, I can start to create new patterns. And I'm using the thick marker right now. And then I can go in and put other smaller details in with my thin marker. I might want to create almost like a floral pattern around this circle, but you certainly can do whatever you'd like around yours. You can use points, make it look like the sun. It's completely up to you. And anything goes. There's really no right or wrong way. I'm gonna go vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical. Just like so, I'm creating some depth by using a vertical, then using a horizontal, and then a vertical. It doesn't have to be straight, it could be wavy. And then I can create a pattern using curved lines in here. I can make them all kind of converge together at the bottom. And that creates the illusion of this being curved or rounded. And I went over my line here so I can actually make this a thicker line so accidents happen and you can turn them into something in your design. You can actually, you know, free flow and if you have, let's say I made a mistake, oops, I went out, I can turn that into part of my pattern. Okay, so don't feel like if you make a mistake, you can't, you just incorporate into your design, okay? So don't worry, this is more of a free form type of design. Notice I didn't use a pencil first. I really didn't plan it out. I'm just using my imagination. Leave the center of this one blank because you're going to paint in that one. So the opposite circles that are inside here, they're going to be done. This one will be a zentangle and this one in the middle of the zentangle will be um, painted in watercolor. the Zentangle drawing is done, you are free to paint this blank white space 
and this blank white circle in with a particular color scheme. I chose warm colors. Those are the three or four colors that are close to one another on the color wheel. So let's take a look at the color wheel so I can explain it a little bit better. So if you've forgotten, this is a basic color wheel. And what I've decided to do is I want to use warm colors, okay? So yellow is one of my favorite colors. And I've decided to choose yellow, orange, and red on the color wheel. Three colors next to one another on the color wheel are called analogous colors, okay? On a more complex color wheel, I would have more colors from yellow to red, okay? So I have uh, yellow, yellow, orange, and orange. Those three colors are analogous, or yellow, orange, orange, red, orange, or orange, red, orange, red. So not to confuse you, you wanna stick to either warm colors, so those are your yellows, oranges, and reds, or your cool colors, which would be uh, blues, violets, and some blue-green, okay? blues, violets, and blue-green. So those would be cool colors, and these are your warm colors. So now I'm going to paint in this one using warm colors. And what you're going to need for that is a watercolor paint set, could be a Crayola set. If you don't have watercolor paints, you could use tempera if you have that, but you could also use markers, okay? You could use Crayola markers. Uh, you could use crayon. You could use colored pencil. Colored pencil blends really nicely together. So use whatever materials you have just so that you can color into these blank white shapes. I'll be using liquid watercolors. They're already poured out into my paint tray. Okay, you can use a paint tray made out of a paper plate. You don't have to have a fancy paint tray. Okay, I'm not going to use my pan set because I already have my colors poured. Whenever I'm painting, I like to use my um, lightest color first. So <clears throat> I'm using uh, yellow, orange, red. I might throw a little magenta in there. Okay, so that was also like, you could consider magenta to be like my red violet. I'm going to start with, like I said, my lightest color. And I'm going to start in the middle of the largest shape. Oh, I want to make sure there's no eraser shavings in my shape that I'm going to paint in. And I'm just going to dip my brush into the paint and hold my paper so it doesn't move and simply just paint a large area. Still have some pencil shavings. They just were stubborn. And I'm filling it in with some of the yellow. Now, if I want, I could take a dip of water and I can spread the paint out with some water. It's watercolor paint. You move watercolors with water. But I really, the more water you add, the lighter your color is. I don't really wanna make my color too light. I wanna keep the colors vibrant. So you can just use right from your paint set right onto the dry paper. We don't have to wet the paper first. And I'm actually going over it a second time. I get very, very close to my marker outline. If you have to use a permanent marker so that it doesn't run. If you use a Crayola marker for all your black outlines, it's going to run. They're not permanent, so that's why you wanna use a Sharpie. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna dip into my orange. I'm only gonna put a little bit of orange on my brush because it's darker. And I wanna overlap some of the yellow. That's why I made the yellow so big, because I really wanna to try to create some yellow orange with my orange on top of my yellow. I don't want to completely cover all the yellow, so that's really important that you don't do that. And I could take a little water, just a little bit, wipe some of it off my brush, and where the two colors meet, I can kind of blend them together. Now, this is regular drawing paper. It's not watercolor paper, so if you uh, brush too much with the paper being wet, you're going to rip it, so try to just, you know, softly and gently stroke your brush in circular motions or up and down, however you feel comfortable. You're just trying to get the colors to blend together. So now I have yellow, yellow, orange. Now I'm just gonna go with the straight orange and overlap some of the yellow orange. And it's just gonna make the orange appear to be a little darker. And the reason why these are harmonious colors is because you have yellow, you have to have yellow to make orange, yellow and 
red create orange, so um, they blend nicely together. They won't turn brown. Okay, I could take a little water again and just kind of where the two colors meet, my orange to my yellow orange. And I'm just getting, trying to get like a smooth gradation from yellow, light yellow to yellow orange to orange. And now I'm gonna move on to my red. I'm gonna dip my brush into my red watercolor and I'm gonna put a little bit on top of my orange to create a red orange. And throw in my orange. I mean my red rather, sorry. And at the tippy end, I could throw in a little bit of magenta. I can take a dab of water and mix, blend these so that they blend together a little bit. It's just so I don't have a harsh line for when it dries. But if you use too much water, again, you'll rip the paper. So use it sparingly. And then I'm just dipping into magenta or if you have pink in your paint set, your pink and your red, you can kind of blend them together. Magenta makes a nice red violet because there's a little violet in that magenta. And now I'm gonna do the other side. I start again with the yellow and I can go over the yellow, overlap it a little bit. And I want to make sure that all the magenta was out of my brush, so I'm going back with the yellow and now I'm going to dip into my orange, throw some orange over the yellow, create a little yellow orange. A little goes a long way, so you don't need to use a lot. You always want to start out lighter, you can always make it a little darker. Drag my orange into my yellow a little bit more making a nice yellow orange. And then I'm gonna go to some straight orange. I'm gonna run out of room, so I only need a small amount. Try not to get it in there. And then I'm gonna go to my red. And then there's really no room for magenta, so I'm just gonna put the red in. And I want my red to be nice and dark down here. Rinse my brush and then with a little water, just where I feel like if it's not blending nicely, just a little bit. Notice I'm just using a little bit of water, not a lot of water. I don't want puddles on the paper. Now I'm going to fill in, in the, this shape over here. And I'm going to take my yellow Play around with some orange. Dip into the red. And dip into the orange over here. Now that all the colors are wet and they're kind of bleeding and blending into one another, that's fine. And I'm just going to take some water, wipe most of the water off your brush and just blend where the colors meet. Because remember it's watercolor, so water moves your paint around. And there you have it. So now I just wait for it to dry. And what I did is I drew a thicker black outline around my circle and then I cut it out. I would wait for your painting to dry before you do that and then just cut it out with a pair of scissors and then you could cut a square piece of paper or a circle piece of paper, circular piece of paper in a like construction paper in one of the colors that you used in your painting and that you could make it larger larger than your actual painting and um, that could be your mounting paper so to create a circular frame um, it adds a little more visual interest and it kind of like you know ties your whole um, design 
together, okay? So, but you certainly could mount it on a rectangular piece of paper if you didn't want to. You could put it right in the middle, but there's a lot of blank space, so, or you could take this circle and now put it here and you can double mount, all right? So there's so many things, different things you could do. You wanna wait for your um, artwork to dry and then all you would do is put glue on the back and glue it down to your construction paper. And there you have it, your Zentangle Yin and Yin using balance and color and line. So you've learned quite a bit today. I hope you enjoyed your Zentangle warm or cool color scheme, yin and yang. And um, I can't wait to see what you've created. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.